Well, it's been a while, hasn't it, since we got ourselves into a fight. Let's see if we can go find ourselves into one of those also. You guys rearranged yourselves, you little bastards, didn't ya? That probably makes a bit of sense now, huh? There we go. So as you rotate your party members, that leads to that happening. Whoa! Got another tremble. Gnashing Nils. Chaos? Requiem, Calamity Gin. Oh yeah. Fade Binder, hear me out for a moment, will you? Oh, well, they're, they're even calling out to me. What's going on up here? The Beastmen pen. They have a pen? Of their own? We've got a problem we can't settle, Fate Binder. When we plotted against Vile, uh, when we plotted against Vile Arson, we agreed we'd split the spoils four ways. But now that, that the rings, rugs, and booze bottles are laid bare before us, seems some folks seem feel entitled to more than their fair share. You want me to adjudicate a settlement between thieves? Thieves, we didn't filch nothing. We killed Vile Arson and took his property right by the, the Circle of Fifths. She nods. Little Gnashing Niles is right. As our weakest, uh, she's earned a right to these spoils, most of all for the abuse of that Vile uh, Arson heaped on her over the years. Let's see. I was, I was, I, I don't know if that is, is it genuinely. Well, it doesn't say lie, so I guess it is lie, right? I guess it, this must not be a lie because it doesn't say lie, even though I've disagreed with that in the past. This bot, this middle one here. That's a pretty loose interpretation of the Orarchon's laws. The strong lead, the weak serve, doesn't give you permission to freely murder others. Sure, it does. The code protects the weak, but also gives the strong a right to succession through the ranks. The voices himself will tell you we've done nothing wrong. Why is that? Val Arson broke the code of the strong lead the, work, the weak serve. He pushed Sweet Niles too far and found out he uh, wasn't stronger than the rest of us no more. I'll hear your plea if everyone is in agreement, in agreement of my involvement. The choir woman nods. I certainly am. I'd like to settle this and put it behind us. What about the rest of you? I am. I also am interested in this Fate Binder's ruling. Let an outsider weigh in. Surely, then you'll see the greater the greater weight of my contributions. One of the more timid horde members ducks her head, scratching through the back of her hair. Are you sure? I've heard bad things about inviting the court's judgment. Once the Fate Binder gets involved, their ruling is absolute, isn't it? She glances to Requiem and Chaos, reading their clues before she relents. Okay, I, I guess I'll go along with it. The last one shrugs. Doesn't matter to me. I already decided to give up my share. I just wanted the bastard dead. Well, that's straightforward for them, huh? Let's see. What's this sub subterfuge one? <laughs> I can, I can just, I can mess with them, being like, "I'll know if you try to lie to me." All right. Let's see here. Why is it a lie? What if I, what if I'm just actually that good that I really will know? <laughs> All right. Uh. Then let us proceed. Tell me what happened, and I'll determine how the gods, the goods, should be dispersed. She cracks her neck and squares her back, eager to relay her part uh, and be done with it. We all got tired of being cut on and wa and watching him torture Niles, so when Requiem suggested the plan, I was eager to lure him into our trap. She glances around and speaks a little softer as she continues, Had to use my finest hooch. I brewed it in a, br a bronze boot I found in the battlefield, but after a couple hours, I had him nice and relaxed, stripped him of his armor, and distracted him after that. That's when I snuck out from under the straw bedding. She runs a hand over the bloody marks of her skin. Long dried, but worn out of pride. Arson never did anything, eat, sleep, or shit, without a weapon. But we'd hobbled him enough that I was able to, to hack him to ribbons. Eventually, he started crawling for the flap of the tent. Where Requiem had stationed me. He crosses his arms over his chest, standing broad and tall. I slid Arson's throat to end it, dismembered his body, and spent the night scattering his bits wherever the uh, between the fighting pit. Two latrines and a salivating beastman. It was bloody and long work, but it was damn worth it. 
Why was he scattering his body parts everywhere? That's the type of thing you do when you cover up a murder, not when you're doing something that you're supposedly rightfully allowed to do. The last gang member flushes and shyly turns her face away under her, your scrutinizing gaze. I, I, I just stood watch a few tents down. I'm sure someone heard the screams, but no one came running, so it worked out fine. You each seem equally satisfied with the outcome of the events. Why are you fighting over the goods then? The Horde member rubs her chin as if wondering herself. Finally, she offers a carefree grin. Guess it's just our nature. If we don't take what we can, uh, what we can when we get it, then how will we ever get ahead? Who will lead you in vile, uh, in vile arson's absence? Without a moment of hesitation, the quiet girl speaks up, sounding more sure than she has the, uh, the entire exchange. Requiem, she saved us. Requiem. He nods brusquely. I'll follow these girls into the screaming jaws of death if they ask me to. I don't care which one's leading us uh, when we get there. Okay, so if he's the dissenter here, but they're all still loyal, and they're electing Requiem as leader, shouldn't Requiem make the final call on exactly how this is handled because she's the leader of their group? I've made my decision. Holy crap, there's a lot of options here. <laughs> uh... Majority of shares go to Niles to recompense for the crimes she suffered. The rest are, sp are split evenly. Uh, goods are split evenly four ways, because it's fair. None of you are entitled to the wealth. You'll destroy the uh, you'll destroy the cash because it's caused a squabble. Half the shares will go to Requiem for a proactive organization of the mutiny. Other half will be allocated uh, to cover my legal fees <laughs> uh, for luring Arson into the trap. Half go to Calamity Jin. The rest of you split even are split evenly between you, or the cash goes to chaos for everything, uh, for carrying the burden of risking punishment. He handled and destroyed the evidence, putting himself at the most risk of, for being caught. But how is it a risk for being caught if they're allowed to do it? At some point, someone's lying. Then, right? <laughs> that has to be the case. Uh. I also. I'm not psyched about these options, to be honest. I actually was really happy with my... I was completely happy with the conclusion that I came to before I clicked on the option to show me the actual answers I can give, none of which are the thing that I actually uh, saw, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna delegate the decision to whatever Requiem thinks should happen because she's supposed to be the leader. That's... it seems weird that that's not an option here. Alright, um... Uh, Charity to Niles is... doesn't really fit in this case. Splitting equally makes sense. Destroying the cash would just piss everybody off. Yeah, basically I can pick anyone to give it the, get, to give the majority to or none at all. I think I'm just going to split it evenly. Yeah. Cause I, he, I don't see how he necessarily was at the greatest risk if they're supposedly doing uh, something that's supposed to be allowed. Who are they going to get caught by? Ah, screw it. Uh, the goods are to be split evenly four ways, as is the most fair and expedient resolution to your dispute. You gain favor. She laughs, face tingling, a pleasant shade of pink under the splotches of her bloody war paint. After all that build-up, well, it ought to be fine, yeah? We didn't kill Arson for his damn rings. Even the Fate Binder thinks we should set it behind us so we can move on. All right, I suppose I've got no complaint. He shrugs. But when he sighs, it, sa it sounds filled with longing for the fortune lost. A predictable answer, but a good one all the same. If the rewards are not split evenly, there will be hurt feelings when the gang is later expected to share risks equally. Yep. It's, I would I, I would react fit similarly, like all that build up to a really simple answer, but that uh, seems fitting all the same. It sniffs. So this is the Beastmen pen. None of them have names. Pax Alpha is the, some vicious... Uh, Pax Alpha is more vicious than Stonestalker's Prima. Oh, I lost it. Is it over here? 
maybe is stronger than any other Beast Woman lands. Any other in Beast Woman lands. It's just random. It's just random dialogue. Oh wait, what was that? What's this? Aha! Oh, two-handed. Bummer. We'll stash it away for later, though. Well, at least I'm resolving issues for people. What's down here? This is a... this is... Vex. I'm not allowed to sell you anything. Right, that's the quartermaster we heard about last time. I can check under someone's tent. I'm just... I'm basically just robbing people at this point. Hello. That's a big crowd. Sickle Notch. Alright. We need the bodies of you mewling pi uh, no, we need the moddies, you- the- the moddies. <laughs> we need the bodies, you mewling pissers. Face red, veins popping on her neck, the Scarlet Fury screams at the horde clustered before her. She waves her arms wildly as she shouts, almost dance-like in her agility, a blade clutched in each hand. Unlike you, cockered pignuts, these conscripts can survive a battle. One of the horde members spits a backlit a, a blackish mix of herbs and phlegm at the Scarlet Fury's chest. So they say to save their uh, so they say to save their necks. Uh, but what's what good's the uh, word of oath breakers and cowards? Furious and nearly faster than the naked eye can follow, she slashes a returning strike. A splotch of red blo uh, blooms across the offending spitter's chest to match her fresh sputum stain. The crowd tenses like a coiled spring, ready to hurl themselves into a bloody fracas. I can ignore it or I can interfere. Uh, what's going on here? Fade Binder, yes, Fade Binder. Good of you to come along. The Horde representative sneers and straightens himself taller, feeling self important in the moment. You just saved this fury's neck. Hardly. She licks the edge of the blade. Then uses it to sm uh, smooth her newly, her newly must hair back. Though the fate binder may yet stay me from smearing the blood with your, the ground with your blood. A damn slew of oathbreakers just came crawling to us less than a fortnight ago, so we we trust a lot, a lot of them, up like beastmen for roast. Why should we become liars and def uh, welcome liars and defectors to guard our backs? The Horde member spits again, but aims to the side this time, careful to avoid hitting the Scarlet Fury. Come now, Feedbinder, you're a clever sort. Tell us your thoughts. We ought to throw them into the pit. Let the lone survivor join us. It's the way of the chorus, right, boss? The pit serves for merriment and to weed out fen-sucked weaklings like you. The Fury snaps at the Horde member. Turning to you, she adds, In this case, it would be but a waste of resources. These are part of, this, uh, of the splinter that held off the, the disfavored adventurians well for many months. We should integrate them into my unit of Furies. So they're worried about- she's worried about uh, having them all get obliterated by the pit because there's only one survivor each time and that could be using up too many actually good soldiers. Whereas normally the fighting pit is to get rid of a bunch of random farmers basically to find the one person that's actually a fighter among them. Uh, Neither of them is a very happy outcome, but uh, in this case it would be wasting soldiers to use them the same way. Got to question the pit situation in general too, like how do you deal with groups of captives? Like, if you get three people, do they go in the pit? If you get 15 people, do they also go in the pit? Because like, does it, do, are you, do you arbitrarily always cut whittle it down from a large number to one, no matter what the starting number is? I kind of wonder if they would randomly bunch people up like, oh we got 20 people, so uh... That'll be four pit matches. We'll get rid of, uh, we'll get 16 deaths and four survivors. Like, are they, did they ever think about that, I wonder? <laughs> They'd have to. It's one of those things that, like, when you're having your fantasy characters being all silly about it, it's easy to be dismissive about that kind of concept and just let it fly and be like, oh, yeah, whatever. It's just, yeah. Woo! They, Spartans throw people off cliffs. Woo! Stuff like that. But, uh, at some point, if you, if it's a concrete universe that people have to live in, those kinds of scenarios would actually have to be thought through, and somebody would actually have to make a decision in those points, too. Let's see. Uh, 
You sure you want me to weigh in? If I do, it'll be as an official envoy of the courts and irrevocable for all par parties involved. The Scarlet Fury cocks a nod in, in agreement. I'll be sated just to have the squabbling done with, but we can't win a war with only fish-necked slattern, uh, slatterns in a sea of blood. We need skilled fighters to wield our blades. We might be made of tearsmen, but we're loyal to Kairos. The chorus ain't an open cattle call to any turncoat who's got a sharpened weapon and a decent pair of boots. He licks a sooty thumb and thought. Toss them in the pit, boss, and I'll donate a share of the proceeds to you. When I was trying to bribe my solution, that's not... He's trying to, he's trying to bribe me to side with him. Which, admittedly, uh, if you're playing character a certain way, totally valid. <laughs> it would be kind of amusing to just take every bribe people give you. And then you're like, well, I, well, he offered, oh well. I guess it's okay. You want to you want to raise? You want to raise that? You want to you want to beat them? Beat his offer? <laughs> Let's see. Um. Wait, what? Oh. So the, back then, the other option was I'll hear you out and then weigh in. But this one, I was like, I I was war I, I thought I was just warning them, but I think. The dialogue may have... Like, I was, I was warning them that the decision was going to be final, but I think that it... As, by picking that one, I, I may have skipped the option to hear them out, because there's no hearing them out now. They're not making any arguments one way or another. It's just... I, I just picked this solution right now. All right, well... So I can either give them to the Scarlet Furies, or I can... Uh, kill all of them except for one of them by sending them to the pits. Or just have them executed for causing an argument. <laughs> I do get a kick out of the idea that that's a, consist a, uh, a consistent option. That you can just keep... Uh, you can, every time the Scarlet uh, Chorus fights over anything, you can just destroy the thing they're fighting over. It's like, that'll teach you. <laughs> there. Was that worth it, everybody? And just do that over and over again throughout the entire game. Uh, the captives will go to the Scarlet Furies to aid with the strategic military operations within the Chorus. You gain favor with the Scarlet Chorus. I think in these situations, you must get the... I assume that if you make a decision, you get favor. And I think if you destroy the thing, you lose favor, probably. Because there, it seems that they're just happy to have the discussion, the uh, argument over with. Uh, it'd be really weird if you, if siding with one side or the other gain or lost favor, because they're both the same faction. The Scarlet Fury salutes you brusquely, but with honor. I'll see them assigned to a suicide mission at once. If the henpeckers can survive that, then they'll be worthy to serve my furies. See, that's even that's a way better idea. Instead of getting them all killed in a pit, you send them on a dangerous mission. So they're still tested, but then they don't all get killed off de facto style. Because in a, in a, you send them on a difficult mission and they survive, that just means that they've proven themselves. But if you send them into the pits to kill each other, that you're just guaranteeing only one person survives. It doesn't matter how good they are on average. A cruel fate for those who once defied the, the chorus, but at least you are offering them another chance to live. Let's hope they make the most of your mercy. Alright, well that's done with it. Bye! A lot of squabbles around camp. Who's this guy? Another vendor? Bloodhound. Kairos willing, I'll become a blood chanter yet. Sanguary. Scraps of food and cloth litter the floor of the tent. Let's grab a few things real quick. What was that? Grain. Wasn't sure if it was grain or flour or sugar. Sugar would be really uncommon, I guess. Just a giant bag of sugar. <laughs> would be weird. Hard leather boots, light armor. Do we have a light armor user? You use cloth, don't you? It's just you, really. Seems like it's an improvement, though. Oh, yeah. Better recovery, better deflection, better disengagement defense. I see no reason not to make the change. We'll stash you for now. What's this? House seal. Made with care and attention to detail. The seal is made with care and attention to detail. You recognize the, its sigil as the merchant's house hand over quill. Oh, there's more back here. Light leather boots. Oh, more disengagement defense, but less of the other stats. I'll stick with the other stats. So this might be the last person before I head straight to the tent. Sanguary. You do have eyes, don't you? Ones that can see how busy I am. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Never mind, I apologize. How dare I, in all honesty. Just inexcusable behavior on my part, I apologize. Hello. So here we have the voices. And what's that? Sybil, the uh, the once defender of Echo Call Crossing, lies before you. It is difficult to tell. It is difficult to tell well her, where her fiery red hair ends and her injury begins through layers of blood. With all the wounds she sustained, a good number of them appeared to have been made after her death. Wow. Yep, she's impaled straight through the chest. That's some redundant staking right there. That just sounds difficult. All right, well, they did, they did their thing, I guess. There's a horde member crouched over there. Seven toes. Oh, look at that. Wait. That's a cage with a person in it. Chrysantha. That's interesting. Enemies of the Scarlet Chorus, who have not yet earned a spike, are left to hang from the cliff wall until death comes for them. Interesting. They're all just this they're all just hanging here. Who's Chrysantha? Can I talk to her? Fatebinder, help me. Yep, there she is. Help, Fatebinder, help, over here. You can't let them torture me, please. Do something. Convict me if you can't set me free. Let's see. What crimes have you committed that would warrant my involvement? She perks up at your response, sauntering closer to the bars of your cage. Or her cage. Well, let's see. There was a time I killed an ox, uh, even knowing they were rare. It was an accident, but I still rode her right off that bluff. She strokes the bars as she thinks, reaching for something stronger. I once spit on my mother. She was furious when she found me dabbling with earth magics. I frigged my cousin when we were 15, set a mountainside on fire. Oh! And Kairos is my middle name. Is it actually? Because <laughs> that, that is bad. That's definitely bad for her. Let's see. It is a capital crime for the name thing. Let's see. I can sentence them for so I can sentence them to, to, to death for uh, having that name. I can say that. Let's see. For your quote-unquote crimes, I sent you to the time already served in that cage, so you can be released immediately. Or do your your lengthy list of ridiculous crimes I sent you to, I to, sends you to a slow and torturous death? Or none of these are worth punishments? And I have no legal right to free you. Let's see. Or I can say the chorus keeps you. Huh. I'm gonna say I need to think it over. I wonder if uh, I can bring up that person in conversation with the uh, voices. The voices of Narat regards you with an unreadable expression. Putridity. It is the fate of all, and yet so many of us are obsessed with making every waking moment leading up to it a fresh new misery. Is that our new favorite fate binder? If you had not guessed, we were contemplating the outcome of Endrian's well. As if proclaiming and resolving the same edicts weren't impressive enough, you found the temer temerity to reject Graven Ash and support our right to conquer these lands. You deserve a just reward when this is all over, but it's too early to congratulate ourselves while there's plenty of war still to fight. What do you need to know? We are dizzy with answers. Let's see. I want to ask about your power. You, you are a remarkable person. We must concede to your flattery, but we can't boast anything as incredible as power, can we? The green smoke behind his mask forms a crude smile. So I can, uh, I can communicate via the way that he communicates, apparently. Though powers you can't seem to understand, the voice of Narat steals the minds and knowledge from his victims. You know this happened often during the campaign against the Tears. What he, what he gains from this ability, beyond his apparent madness, is anyone's guess. You'd know better to ask him about it directly. 
Whoa. That's interesting. So, I'm being warned by lore impact that I know better than to ask him directly about his interrogations. Whoa. Why is only that one green, by the way? Let's see. What do I even do with this then? It seems like every single one, if that's the case, then it seems like all these are answers, bad, answer, bad uh, questions to ask, right? Let's see. It seems like all these things would get me in trouble or something based on that warning. I'm gonna heed the warning. Let's see. You do well not to bore us. Hey, asshole. Do you see what I did earlier? You're just being rude, considering what I've done. Uh, what's your plan? I'm ready to talk strategy. Of course you have questions. We'd be disappointed if you didn't have any. Our first priority is to humiliate that piss bucket graven ash, but we'll have a better chance of it once every corner of the tears is wearing red. Do you see our design fade binder? Does our maddest com uh, complement our method? We will invade every man, woman. Uh, sorry, we will invite every man, woman, or, or child who draws a breath and, uh, and occupies this fingernail of a peninsula to join the Scarlet Chorus. A conquest by invitation. How very polite. <laughs> Lost loyalty, loyalty with F on that one. Oh, don't encourage him. He he's already got his own small council of sycophants in his head. Isn't it? Graven Ash would slash and burn this whole continent. Would, uh, we must counter his wants and evil with acceptance and tolerance for these poor tearsmen. The conquest is a delicate matter. It needs feeding, watering, soft caress, a lullaby before bed. We will invite the leaders of the resistance to join us. If we have their leaders, the people will follow. You will bring them to us, yes? Chiefs and the assets of Chieftain. As for how long uh, you, as for how you factor into these plans, that is in part up to you. We have many ingots in the fire. It's more of a question of what piques your interest. The blade grave is a beautiful pocket of disorder. An edict shreds the land to ribbons, and soldiers by the hundreds are led into the furnace of war. Angry sons of an old stalwart, dubbing themselves unbroken, clash spears with the disfavored. Unbroken. The Unbroken Legion was the proud and accomplished army of the realm of Stalwart, citing their vict victories as evidence of skill. They prided themselves at never facing defeat while fighting on home soil. After the Edict of Storms tore apart Stalwart and, and twisted into the Blade Grave, barely a twentieth of the Broken's former strength survived to continue the war against Kairos' forces. Let's see, so we can go to the Blade Grave. Uh, we, can use the, we can use the Edict and the conflict to our benefit. They keep the disfavored occupied, and the tears within our grasp. While these idiot juggernauts bash each other into ruin, we can extract what we need. It's fitting enough that the, uh, that the, uh, blade grave is then, like, it's essentially the disfavored fighting what's like another copy of them, because it's two separate forces of, uh, of undefeatable soldiers going up against each other, supposedly. The daughter of Graven Ash has been a prisoner to these stalwart wretches. Secure her for us and fetch her to Cacophony straight away. Inviting Ash's progeny into the fold is an advantage we cannot ignore. Seek out Jagged Remedy at, in Trapper's Junction. Uh, junction. He has uh, cornered a beleaguered unit of Unbroken. Help him recruit their leader, Matias, into the fold. That we, we, he, we, he might be able to... He might help us reach the Jewel of the Realm, the Great Keep of Sentinel Stand. Tunon's arcane smiths set up shop in Lethian's Crossing. With one sim with simple ore dredged from the heart of Teratus, they can assemble wondrous crafts of iron. Our, in our intellect swells overall with secrets, yet we are ignorant of the iron secret. If we went after Lethian's Crossing in particular, that'd be interesting because uh, it's the place that I governed at one point and I helped set it up, but it's also a core resource for the enemy team. So it's obviously something that'd be worth trying to take out from a strategic standpoint if you even ignore the fact that my character's already connected to it. 
Seek out the Forge Bound, and their master, who even now makes Ferlethian's Crossing, have her sent to Cacophony. I will guarantee your protection and safeguard her knowledge. An artist such as herself needs to be shielded from the perils of war. According to the whispers of our spies, a gray beard by the name of Eldian may be able to tell you more. We are nothing if not perceptive, uh, receptive to the wisdom of ages. Report back to us when we're finished. Our intelligence may be of use to you. Let's see. I do like the idea of Lethian's Crossing. Uh, what can you tell me about the Blade Grave? Before our conquest, it was the region of it was the region of stalwart, warlike, and fiercely independent in character. The region bloodline ruled by their torrid and often inbred lines of secession. Secession, of course, the Edict of Storms was thrown has thrown all of that into disorder. What, who rules the area now? A complex question with no clear answer. The Unbroken Legion, a, a rabble group of veterans from the Stalwart Army, struggle to maintain a hold by force of arms. Behind the wall of, of St Sentinel Strand, the last of the reg regents lives out his days, no doubt thinking himself a strong and, and re as strong and re uh, relevant as ever. Tell me about Graven Ash's daughter. As severe and uncompromising as her idiot father, we would liken her to a tower shield with a voice like a ram's horn warped out of tune. We met the girl once, and we nearly came to blows. If war and the passage of years has softened her temper, then we should get along magnificently with, your, with you, when you, you when you present her to Cacophony. About the Edict of Storms. Ah, your little handiwork. We envy you, Stormcaller, to have been the conduit of such power. It must have been a pleasure like no other. Swirling maelstroms now blast the land, and Sentinel Strand, uh, stand, the fortified ha heart of the Blade Grave, is both trapped and imprisoned by Kairos's edict. The cowardly regent, who survived the war, hides there to this day, protected and imprisoned by Kairos's anger. Only by perceiving, uh, by piercing the unforgiving fabric of that storm could anyone reach its heart and drive a blade through its core. Kairos drafted the Edict of Storms to punish the defenders of Stalwart for hiding behind the walls of their keep. The wording of the Edict specifies that the death of the Stalwart's ruling family will end the storm. To this day, the locals are welcomed, uh, welcome and encouraged to assassinate their former ruler. Interesting. So when I first read, when I first got to the prologue part where we read the edict, I kind of thought that it was over and done with immediately. I thought that we summoned the edict and it obliterated everything and that was it, and that the whole kingdom was just a wreckage and nothing was left. But now we find out that not only is there a standing army there still, but the but the uh, edict itself itself has not gone away because the leader that's supposed to die has still not died. So it's been that, it's been like that for years now. What can you tell me about Lethian's Crossing? That's maybe a little weird. <laughs> this is some sort of joke. We'd know a great deal about Lethian's Crossing if you'd let us have the stewardship of the settlement. Now look what you've done, given Grave and Ash a free run of the place. We'll leave you to clean up this mess of your own creation. The Forge Bound are the true gem of the crossing. They are keepers of the secret of, uh, of iron, so a tight-lipped bunch by nature. Tell me about the Forge Bound. Must you bore us with your incessant ponderings? Go speak with your with our lackey Seven Toes. She can weather the relentless assault of your curiosity. <laughs> he just gets tired of talking to you. That's amusing to me. And, and rather rude considering that I've been an asset to them. So I can't talk to anyone about Chrysantha, can I? Let's check Seven Toes. Hey, old Fatebinder. The voices of Narad ordered me to answer any of your pestering questions, so I guess that's what I'm here to do. She scoffs. Not that I, not what I'd call Lieutenant's work, but I'm not here to question the voices. So, what do you need from me? Do you enjoy working in the Scarlet Chorus? I enjoy surviving, and right now the chorus is the only way to do it. But his favor don't n allow foreigners in their legion until the war is over and the tears under Kairos's heel. It's red or dead. I never suspected I would have a taste for the work until I got started at the front lines. Something about carving a path through your enemies and watching the army grow behind you is just... satisfying. Makes you feel good to belong to something. Probably feels like playing Snake. 
what do you what do you think of the voices of Narat? He's the boss. He calls the shots, and I follow. I don't ask a lot of questions. She glances around, uncomfortable. I'll say this much. You don't want to insult him, especially when he's going on about his art. He takes that sort of thing personally. Not that you could really tell under that great bronze helmet of his. Tell me about yourself. I started out like most Scarlet Chorus rant, uh, rants. Conscripted off the farm and aided and armed with a pitchfork, I didn't. it didn't take me long to uh, warm up to the idea of Kairos' army. We had more freedom than the tears ever allowed, and I've never been opposed to joining the winning side. I didn't want to see the whole war from the front line, so the first order of business was to kill my gang boss and take his place. Easily done. He was a louse. I ran with a with at least a half dozen gangs since the start of the conquest, and it funneled me all the way uh, to Cacophony. It's not an easy life, but there's no lack of amusement to be had, and plenty of opportunities for advancement. If you're curious about how I got this gig, you can check out the previous lieutenant over there. She thumbs over to a still figure impaled on a spike on a pike. The voice is a sucker for ambition and clever solutions to a problem. I have questions about my first task. Oh yeah, I never even chose which one was going to be my first uh, task, did I? Yeah. That's funny. She, we couldn't even, he couldn't even maintain the conversation long enough to just pick one. Or let me pick one. Go ahead, can't you have you doing the voices bidding uninformed? He's not what you'd call a perfectionist, at least at least by our understanding of the word, but he likes to have his orders understood. Alright, so Lethian's crossing. Before the conquest, it was a small trading post that you could pass by without regrets on the way to something to somewhere better. Uh, with scared folks running off with their possessions and rings, it's become something greater. A city, almost. Toonon sent his forge-bound smiths there to wor uh, work on their weapons in private. Between that and the refugees, Lethian's Crossing has gotten more attention over the last three years than the last three centuries, making you wonder about the types of places that spout up only on account of war. So who leads the forge bound? They have a master by the name of, of Zidenia? I'd often be tempted to make that Z silent, but it seems like it'd be not. That, that'd be a weird letter to make silent in this context, so I'm gonna say Zidenia. I only know the name because I heard the voices babbling it as he spun some plan or other. She's supposed to be a rare talent. I couldn't tell uh, good iron from bad myself. And tell me about the settlement, or what you know. Not much to tell, mostly families live there. But some groups have to share space and pile on top of each other for a place to rest their head. During the conquest, we relieved the, the pressure by swooping in and taking a few locals for the, their army. But it's getting to be chancy with the Civil War and all. Let's, uh, head out then. I'm just going to say I'll get started with Lethian. Uh, Lethian's Crossing sounds like a fine prospect. I like the idea of doing the other one after. I wonder if I can do one or the other or what. Let's see. Either way... They, they made a good point of making both characters and mo both locations important to your main character, by the way, because you were directly influenced, uh, you, de you, you directly impacted both. But the fact that I actually ran Lithian's Crossing for a while makes me definitely want to visit there. And I don't know at this time whether or not I get to do both in whatever order I feel like, or if I pick one and lose the other one. You'll hit Lithian's Crossing if you aim towards uh, Sunset Spire. Not even our dumbest gang could miss it, but you're already good at tracking down spires, aren't you? She winks. Careful of the disfavored out there. I'm sure they'll protect their iron with the mother's frenzy. Report back to Cacophony when you're done. Check uh, check in with the old man, Eldian. He said he'd be a useful. Uh, he said to be a useful fellow. There we go. We now have an objective, and uh, some experience spread amongst the party. Apparently, enjoy your plus ones, everyone. And there goes the dissonance of war. I might as well check in then. I'll, I guess there's no context to, to get from other people about this person. Let's see. So I can say, remind me of your crimes. Let's see. So I'm slightly torn. 
I, I mean, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing my job, and this is my job. It's punishable by death to use the name Kairos. So that's there we go. I don't know if this is going to be actually done immediately, or if it's going to be like, oh no, I was lying. I was just trying to figure out how to get out of here. We'll see, or if or if maybe it won't matter, and it's, this is just the last dialogue, and that's it. I don't know. Anyway. You're in luck. For the capital crime of usurping the Overlord's name, I can sentence you to a swift beheading on the morrow. Oh. Well. That was brief. Uh, thank you, Fadebinder. Thank you. Merciful envoys of your benevolent Overlord, I won't forget your kindness for as long as I yet live. Given her training, I bet it was a matter of time until she was taken to see the voices. It's probably the uh, best the Archon Secrets not learn everything the, the Earth Seekers know. That could only come back to harm everyone. Is her name really Kairos? Well, that's one way to piss people off, huh? It's really weird to have somebody be so happy about the uh, the amazing mercy you're giving them by just killing them. The I guess that just spells how terrible everything is in this situation. Have fun! So can I talk to the merchant now? Greetings, Fadebinder. I've been given permission to sell you our wares. Thank you. Let's start off by selling off our wares. So we have Topaz. What was that down there? A broken da. So that's worth four. That's a start. What is this? What's this thing? Crimson Great Spear. Oh, it's a two-handed spear. It's not a. It's not a javelin or anything. Uh, twenty-five to thirty-seven pierce damage seems really high. Swine Herder. What's this one? Two-handed. It has goring effect. Swine Herder was uh, was originally the name of a Scarlet Chorus recruit who went to war armed with his with his pig handling stick. After he killed his way up the ranks and became a noted gang boss, Swineherder gave up his old name and tossed his makeshift weapon down a latrine. Who dug it out, and what happened to make this feces kicked spear the rare example of weaponry it is today, is anyone's guess. Ugh. Goring. 100% bonus hit pre uh, precision on targets below health. Huh. I assume- yeah, it must be a spear then. The Marrow Reaver. Do they all have stories? They totally have stories. Alright. Uh, one-handed axe. Can compare that to you. Oh! Same stats as, as the current weapon, but it has the additional effect of goring, which we've already been over what that does. But it's also really expensive. Fractured Iron Sword. Less DPS, more armor penetration. Ooh, I might be able to get a better shield. This one has more dodge. Hound Leathers. One less armor, but three slash and fire armor, minus five crush and frost armor, so it's kind of all over the place there. But a whole bunch of deflection. So it's good against slash and fire, bad against hammers and frost, and a whole bunch of deflection, and some better recovery. Very expensive. Crimson spear armor, that's heavy armor, but which I can't be worn right now. Ooh. This helm's a bonus, because it's the Scarlet Fury helm. So it's cap of precision, so it gets bonus... No, sorry, that's what I have right now. Uh, so compared to my cap, it'd give me bonus deflection and accuracy. Not bad. Mostly I just want to sort through my giant horde of nonsense items, though, if I can. Let's see, do I want this great axe? It's it's worth a decent chunk. I kind of want to hold on to a one two-ended weapon, just in case I encounter a two-ended weapon user. That might be useful. That's worth 17. I'm iffy about selling her a unique weapon off. Because I'm worried that I'll get in some sort of trouble for that. Let's see, this, the Iron Great Sword is 16 to 20. Yeah, the Great Axe is significantly better, I think. So, I guess that's one reason to get rid of the other two handed weapon. But I'm going to keep one powerful two handed weapon on, ha on hand just in case we get a two handed weapon user. And I have a better idea, and I get a better example of who, who to give it to. Tearforged Bronze Spear. So why am I using the Ripper instead of this? Oh, because the Ripper has armor penetration, right? Or not? This one has more range, better recovery, more DPS, slightly. But that one has three armor penetration, which is a lot of armor penetration. Which may lead to better DPS in, in action. Yeah. 
I think that armor penetration is worth keeping a hold of. Could be wrong. It's all kind of up in the air after all. There we go. All quartered away. We've got 50 bronze now. It should go a long way towards training if I can find another one. Beastman Pen, Bloodhound Camp, Scarlet Fury Camp, Blood Chanter Camp. Okay, those are all camp names. I thought they were marketplace. I thought those, like they were vendors of some kind. Are you also a vendor down here? Lyric? Welcome, Fate Binder. They sell... Ooh. Sigil of Fire and Sigil of Passion. They're expensive. They're real expensive. And I can't even use this one on this character. Still, Fire and Passion. Let's see. Tell you what. Before we get screwed by this decision, somehow, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a save. Because it's really expensive, and I don't necessarily know what we're getting ourselves into, so... Now that we have a save established, thankfully, I can take a look at that. What the hell is Passion gonna do? Just go ahead and grab that, huh? The Sigil of Emotions. There it is down here. We have so many of these now, don't we? Sigil of Emotions. The energies evoked by the Sigil of Emotions both fortify and undermine the mental humor as creating passions in the target ranging from apathy to blinding rage. The Scarlet Chanters of the Scarlet Chorus are the self-professed masters of the Sigil of Emotions, having developed the technique through the study of Siren, Archon of, so Archon of Song. So this is her category of magic. Sigil of Focused Intent, Sigil of Distant Impact. So the local one, uh, range of two meters, is Enraged Mind, which uh, does not rage on an allied target for 12 seconds. Interesting. Cause an ally to fly into furious rage, ally gains the effect of Enraged Affliction, at the end of which they may return to their former state. So they get uh, less recovery, more health, and will. Taunting Jest is a ranged spell. Does four to nine raw damage versus a will. Gives, gives you taunted affliction. So it makes them focus on the taunter. Better make sure you're using that as someone who can take a hit then. Fire a bolt of, of uh, harassive energy. F uh, filling the target with hatred and taunting them to attack. Well, now we know. It's not necessarily high priority for me. I'd probably go for fire over that. But either way, I think I might avoid spending that sheer quantity of money right now. I think I'm going to go ahead and revert.